Hey, everybody. It's the Drive to School podcast. I'm Pastor Goodman, and uh, my good friend, Deaconess Sarah Longmire, is back. How are you doing today? I'm doing all right. How are you? Doing all right. That That's a fair one. Um, and so when we're just doing all right, and uh, one of the things that uh, that we have to fall back on is a, a liturgy, uh, the, the church service. So um, we, we believe that the liturgy is not the only way to, to hear God's word, but we believe that it's probably the best tool uh, that, that we've got. And, and so it's not a use it or, or else you're not really saved kind of thing, but it's that there are a lot of real good gifts hiding in the divine service, hiding in evening prayer that we did all through Lent. Um, and and some of them actually start to confront the things that we carry around with us, the things that that we hide, the things that are going on in our life. There was one little petition that caught your ear uh, not too long ago, right? Correct. Absolutely. Yeah. It's um, for those who bring offerings, those who do good works in this congregation, those who toil, those who sing, And all the people here present who await from the Lord great and abundant mercy, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. That's awesome because, well, each and every one of those is is sort of a different set of baggage, right? Mm -hmm. But they all get sort of heaped together as the ones who receive mercy from God. And, and that's probably important for a number of reasons, right? What if we broke it down and just sort of picked it apart uh, line by line? What do you think? Yeah, that sounds great. Who's up first there? So it starts with, for those who bring offerings. What does this mean? Yeah, I mean, I think when when we use the word offerings, certainly within um, the liturgy, there's a specific place for bringing monetary gifts. So those who are supporting their local congregation. But I think we also, as Lutherans, recognize the gift of vocation. So offering service, offering time, offering presence um, to your neighbor. And so I think all of those can be encompassed in um, those who bring offerings. Right. There's this little Luther quote that I, I can never quite chase down all the way through, but it's it's essentially to the, the point that God doesn't need your good works, but your neighbor does. Um, and so there's nothing in the world I can do for God that he couldn't do better for himself. In fact, most of the time I try and help him out, I'm pretty sure I make his life harder. Uh, but at the same time, uh, there are, are neighbors that that can benefit even by uh, God working through a sinner such as me. And so sometimes, yes, it's it's those who tithe, but but sometimes it's it's the people who just make a phone call to a shut-in and just say, hey, it's the people who put together taco bowls for the midweek meal or do childcare. It, there, there are a million different little things that that all sort of seem to go unspoken for and unthanked in the congregation. And, and that's a thing that that sort of piles up a weight, that this idea that that my work is not noticed. What do you, What do we say to that? Yeah, well, so when you think about work uh, noticed or not noticed, I think we can fall into this worry of comparison. Hmm. So um, I either have to carry around that which I should do compared to what I see my neighbor doing or that which I'm not doing or on the flip side, hey, look how great I am. Did you see all the things that I signed up for? Right. So uh, there is gift in just looking at um, who brings offerings. And I think you know, on the one hand, you can pick that apart, but on the other hand, you can just, thanks be to God, there are people who serve within their vocations, within their opportunities. You know, we think about those that are intentional. Yeah. Like serving the tacos and watching the kiddos, but, um, how about greeting the person who's sitting next to you in the pew or giving a smile to the mom who's juggling three kiddos by herself or, um, greeting someone who's, who's new to the congregation and doesn't know anyone. I think even those small things, um, our neighbors need, cause I've been that new person before. Um, yeah. and I think there's opportunity to expand and to just recognize that kindness to our neighbor, um, doesn't have to meet some sort of qualification based on an outward, <laughs> scale. Do you know what I mean? But it's just, it's showing love. It's reflecting grace. Thanks be to God. 
I think that might actually be the way to, to deal with it because God uh, gives us in, in our liturgy sort of a response to every single one of these. And that's, that's Lord have mercy. The, the people who bring offerings are the ones who receive mercy, not because they have brought offerings, but because the Lord is merciful. The Lord is so merciful that, that he doesn't sort of measure your offering. He doesn't sort of contrast whether or not you feel like you've gotten enough credit for it, or you've just gone unnoticed. He doesn't feel like our answer based on how successful you feel like you have been, or whether or not you feel like yours was the one that matters versus the ones that you wish that you were doing or wish that you could do, but nobody asked. Um, but but instead, simply, you are the one who receives mercy. God sees it. And because of the cross, because of what Christ has done for us, the answer is the same. Lord, have mercy. And it, it bunches us up with the next one, too, which is also important, right? Yeah, it's uh, those who do good works in this congregation. Receive mercy, not for doing works, but because the right. Lord is merciful. What, is, what does it mean, though, to... to do good works in the, in the congregation. Yeah, you know, I think this one can um, expand a little bit on our conversation about offering, right? So we're mm -hmm. thinking about what you just said, you know, the Luther quote, um, our neighbors are the ones who need our good, good works. And I think in society, good works can get a little bit um, mixed up. They seem to have a, a false sense of good and have to be elaborate. Um, again, this comparison to neighbor. So um, instead, hey, you handed someone a tissue who just sneezed. Thanks be to God. They needed it in the time, right? Or you held a kiddo um, so mom could go take care of her other kiddo. And um, or you shared what page you were on in the hymnal because someone's not used to using the book. All of these things God calls good. They're, they're sharing his love with those around you. Um, they didn't necessarily make a splash. There wasn't a parade, but um, that's not what we call good. But it's, it starts with his love though. Like you said, there's a really interesting point there because I think a lot of times there's, there's sort of a pressure on the church to outwardly show that it's worth taking up real estate by doing enough good work. So why don't you even have a food pantry? Why why don't you even offer a shelter to, to battered women? And if you're not sort of doing enough of these things, are you even worth our time and, and attention? And, and first and foremost, the works that are done, uh, foremost by Christians, are usually done in secret. Uh, the left hand usually doesn't know what the right hand is doing, and that's a better thing, not a worse thing. But, but more than that, though, uh, this doesn't start with, well, the church is a place where people do good things for each other, but rather the church is a place where we receive God's mercy, and God's mercy is so abundant that it, it splashes out into some very big and meaningful things like running a hospital and some that, that seem otherwise insignificant, like handing somebody a tissue. But at the same time, it's again, it's that Lord have mercy that everything exists in this realm because God is first merciful. And, and if this is the case, then we don't have to sort of measure the qualifications of how big or little our service is or, or any of those other things, but simply God is merciful in this building. And that means something that means something so much that you might actually be able to see it if you look around. Yeah. And I think it, uh, it takes the pressure off and it helps understand what good means. Um, cause words matter and the way that they're used matters. And so, um, being the, the flashiest doesn't necessarily mean good compared to God's definition. So when we're just merely serving out of his mercy, reflecting his love, giving grace that we've been given because there's so much of it. Um, thanks be to God, that's good. And yeah, whether it seems or feels big doesn't necessarily negate the truth that that's what ca God calls good because he said it before us. This is good because as we sort of walk our, our way down this petition, it's going to, by human ears, seem more and more insignificant as we go, right? Because first, it's, it's the people who give money and, and money. Yeah. And, and second, it's the people who do the work. And, and that's important. And, and then it's the people who... Toil. What is toil? The words matter. Yeah. yeah. Words do, my, do matter. Um, those who toil, I... So this would this definition has changed, I think, for me, at least as yeah. I've gone through life and experience. Um, first blush, it it feels like those who work. So it kind of feels like, oh, those who are still just, you know, doing all the things, right? Um, but I think when you toil, there's there's a level or an understanding of of difficulty or struggle or um 
maybe even suffering, um, those who toil, those who are, are, are in it, you know, whatever it is, the thick of, of the not so pleasant <laughs> and, um, yeah. And so, you know, we've, like you just kind of mentioned, we've got these like givers, doers, givers, doers. And then we have those that are struggling or those that are working hard. And it kind of feels like it shouldn't all be bottled up and we're not even done with the petition. Right. Right. Well, but um, there's this other part of toil but, though, yeah. too, um, that more often than not, when we use this word, it's because you can't actually measure the output. Like it, it, and mm-hmm. when you toil for the day, it's because if you look at just this moment, it looks like I'm getting nothing done. I'm just, I'm working and I'm hurting and I hate it. And nothing that I want is actually happening for, for those who toil, for those who, who feel like that the church service isn't actually accomplishing its goals. The Lord has mercy on you for those mm-hmm. who, are in in it, so to speak, you know, who are just sort of trying to make heads or tails of life and who aren't reaching the goals that they have set for themselves or the goals that others have set for those who are wishing to sort of measure outcomes by things that, that aren't coming the way that they want. The Lord is merciful. I, I think it's, it's, it's important to be able to find yourself not simply as a doer, as a success story, as, as an achiever, but even sometimes as the one who cannot by any right way measure their output. That's a gift because, well, God doesn't either. Like that, that, that's sort of the point of, of the religion is that, that um, you are rewarded based on Christ's work, not, not yours. And so for, for those of us, then loving our neighbor isn't about achieving anything, marking it off on a calendar, drinking enough water or any other standard that you want to set for yourself. But, but rather when you sort of hold up whether or not you have done enough and tried to climb a ladder, it, it stops being about you. And again, we're answered with God is merciful to you. Yeah. Yeah, even in the midst of whatever it is that you are accomplishing or not accomplishing, there is his mercy. There he is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Next one, those who sing. God be praised for them. (laughs) Yeah, but here's the thing. That's everyone who participates, who literally will open their mouth during the hymn. Okay, so. so, Yeah, that's also, though, for for the people who can't. Um, Yes. Like this is, this That's is, I, I think mean. so important. These are the hymns that, that, that preach comfort to the people who, who can't necessarily always stop and listen. Um, I remember some of the worst days of my life where I couldn't actually bring myself to sing hymns. People sing to me, um, the Lord was merciful through you for that. God be praised. Yeah, absolutely. Because again, you know, speaking within liturgy, um, we have this beautiful put together um, set of words that all come from God. They're all based mm. in his promises. And so, yeah, when you cannot be the singer um, or when you do feel really excited and happy to be singing, um, either way you're, you're receiving, whether it's through you processing as you hear or through you processing as you, as you actually produce. So it's a gift. Absolutely. There, there's something to be said then about why the Christians are gathered. We, we're, we're gathered not to give money to this building, not to do good works, not simply to, to sort of toil, uh, to, to just keep doing the same thing over and over again, even though it doesn't look like we're actually making any headway. We're there to share God's word. We're, we're here so that we can speak and hear the promises back and forth to each other, which is going to lead us to our next one, right? Yeah. And all the people here present who await from the Lord, great and abundant mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Yeah. So this idea um, that there are hurting people in church who knew, right? Yeah. Yeah. Although all of us are there um, to receive, to be um, rerouted away from the toils and the troubles of the world and uh, found in Christ, our identity um, re-announced to us. Um, And so whether you are in church, unable to sing, toiling, um, worrying about whatever it is that you carried in with you, um, you receive receive mercy. We are saying um, that we're praying for those who await great mercy from the Lord. And then we say back, Lord, have mercy. It's all focused on Christ and who he is and his work. And that's mercy. That's 
on the cross for us. That's Good Friday and Easter for us. Um, and so I just find it really, really um, important that all of these things are within the same petition. So we think about the congregation as a whole being the body of Christ, um, those who can serve outwardly and those who are passing the tissues, those who are singing and those who are who are waiting. listening. Yeah. Waiting. Like this is the word wait. It's, yeah. it's entirely passive because nobody's waiting because they want to. Um, right. Like this is those who are, are stuck just crying out, Lord have mercy and and waiting. But here he answers um, that the people gathered are are this mix, uh, that this uh, this band of, of, we call it the church militant, but I, I really struggle with the term because there, there's an awful lot of limping going on uh, inside of the march. <laughs> um, when we when we start to talk about what it is then um, that, that drives the church, be you one who, who gives, one who waits or anything in between it's the lord is merciful to you absolutely and so we all together then let us pray to the lord in the responses lord, lord have mercy. mercy it binds and us god, together yeah it does yeah that's fantastic mm -hmm. There are all of these little gems throughout the, the liturgy, all of these prayers. All, the gift is that it might not matter to you until you are, like you, you might be there 30 years and, and never quite notice it, but the week that you need to hear it, you will. Uh, this is this is a tool. It's, it's, it's a gift from God because here he, he over and over again confronts us with his promises for mercy and so that when we need it, we'll hear it. Yeah, it gives some st stability amongst the chaos that sin and struggle often um, breed around us. Um, and so I think, yeah, we hear these words again and again. We say these words again and again, and um, they continually give gifts because they are rooted in God's word. And as you just said, as his pro in his promises, as he has promised. And um that is what we need when we come to church. Deaconess Sarah Longmire, thanks so much for hanging out. You're very welcome. Bye, friend.